Hey boys, welcome back to the channel where we're going to be going through the Gold Coast Titans 2023 team and and uh, in discussion video now. And the, the Titans, oh boy, what can we expect from this Gold Coast Titans outfit? I, oh, I feel like, you know, they're a team in preseason for the last couple of years where you look on, look at their team sheet, look at some of the talent, and they they excite me. <laughs> they excite me every year, but they they've been they've been disappointing. They've been disappointing for a long time. Now this year, it's it's a little different. They they still have a lot of excitement, but just a little bit more because of some of the signings are very quality. Some really good signings that it'll. A couple of these signings are going to. Like, their season heavily reply, uh, relies on, you know, how these guys hold up. That's going to be the big thing. But I am I am fairly optimistic about the Titans. I do... Th like, they're not going to be a top four team. That's for sure. I, I do see them getting into the top eight. I'm thinking around that seven, eight. Um, like I said, it's going to be an absolute log jam. So I'll have to... <laughs> I'll have to go through and, and, and really dive into who, who I think is going to get from like 6th to 13th. It's going to be tough, but uh, I, I like the look of their team. So let's let's quickly go through the player movement. So the gains, there is some... I, they, they've... I mean, obviously the Tigers and the Bulldogs have been like the big, big movers this year, but the Titans, I think some of their quality is like... They've signed some real quality... Um, Obviously, stand out here, Kieran Foran, coming from the Seagulls. Uh, he, I mean, you know, Foran, it was great to see him last year. He was able to basically, I don't know, he might have missed a couple of games, but uh, he was basically able to play the full season. Obviously, Manly didn't do too well, but I thought Kieran Foran was, was, was very solid. And I, I think he will be a, a massive inclusion for the Titans. I just, I just hope that... I just hope that it's not a year too late for Foreign because I mean it's it's he's been a weird one, right? Like uh, he's one of the more disappointing and not disappointing as in his performances, but man, he could have been like he could have been regarded as one of the best five eights in the in the game, really, if we're being honest. When he burst onto the scene at the um, at the Sea Eagles with DCE, uh, he was outstanding, international. And then just, you know, the way he played, like he played so tough. Def I'm, I still remember, I still remember his debut game. Take you on the Raiders, Tom Leroy Lars. He cut him in half like three or four times. His defense was just incredible. Um, and he played the game hard. And unfortunately, it, it sort of came back to bite him and hasn't been able to string back-to-back -to -back years together. But then, you know, going back to the Seagulls, he was able to regain that sort of form and... And, uh, and, and, you know, wasn't, wasn't out for, for, for much at all. So I'm just hoping he can put, he can hopefully put a couple of seasons with the Titans without too much hassle. It's going to be a big thing there. Uh, Chris Randall, they've also, I, I, I wasn't actually, um, I, I, I heard the name, but, um, I didn't actually remember that they signed Randall, but that's honestly a pretty solid pickup. Um, he does the job. No, nothing too flashy. You know, there's a couple of guys uh, running around in dummy half that are pretty similar. But as a backup dummy half, you could do a lot worse than Randall. You know, he'll make his tackles. Nothing too flashy, but he'll he'll get the job done. Decent service. Um, and it's it's been an area that they just they just haven't been able to to nail down for a long time. Um, probably going back to like Matty Schrama. God, he's another one that I, I look back on and I'm sad about because Schrama, oh man, he was my, one of my favorite players back in the day. But again, like just the size of him and, and how hard he played, he, he couldn't really keep it up in the NRL and obviously retired early. But um, probably since that moment, they I'm trying to think who, the, who they've even had. Um, but uh, he's, a, he's a good handy pickup. Uh, next one, Aaron Shops, uh, Aaron, Aaron Shop from the from the Bulldogs. So the doggies have signed up big, but they have lost. I, I think they've lost a, a big cog in the machine here. Obviously, they do have some some really exciting young outside backs coming through. So probably, it, I think it is a disappointing loss to a lot of their fans. But probably when they looked at it long term, 
wasn't the biggest loss for them, but I think it's a huge pickup for the for the Titans. He is, I I think he's great, um, aggressive, strong defensive, which is oh, it's one of the biggest is one of the biggest areas that the Titans need to improve is their edge defense. And I mean, foreign Aaron Shop. A couple of really good edge defenders. And even, you know, Chris Randall through the middle. Um, solid as all heck. So, good pickups there. Um, and I, I imagine, like, they do have a lot of outside backs, but uh, Shop will slot straight into the centers. Uh, Joe Stimson um, <clears throat> didn't really do too much at the doggies. So, you know, he's, no, he's an okay little um, pickup there. He's a bit of depth. Uh, Sam Darrell's the other big one here. And, and like I said at the start, Kieran Foran and Verrills, they are injury prone. Poor old Verrills. I'm hoping the change of scenery just provides a little bit of luck for this guy because, again, he is a very quality number nine. And if he can just find some consistent games back to back in a couple of seasons, uh, he'll be an excellent pickup. So I, I do, I think it's just smart recruiting. Getting Verrills was sort of like a big signing, but then picking up Randall as just the. As a good little backup, because I mean, let's be real. Verrills, is he going to play the full season unscratched? I I doubt it. <laughs> uh, it's just a matter of hopefully there's no serious uh, serious injuries for for Verrills, because again, I, I think that that's a it's a fantastic pickup. Um, they have lost a bit, um, and, and quite a few guys that I'm very happy to see go. Um, so Herman Sasse, uh to the Dolphins. Um, I actually think it's a good pickup from the Dolphins. Actually, Herman, he, he uh, he's a bit of an, an enigma. Um, <clears throat> I I, t I feel like he should be a lot better than he is. I mean, at the Broncos, he probably had his best footy, but I don't know. He just wherever he's gone, he's gone on pretty decent money and just has not lived up to potential. So hopefully the Dolphins, Wayne Bennett, can get it out of him. I think Bennett was there when he was at the the Bronx. I think he must have been right. Um, I think so. Uh, Jermaine Asako also gone. You know, Sam Lasone gone. He he was actually okay off the bench for them. Lasone he added a bit of bit of uh, power, but he also I think there's better options than Lasone, so I'm not sad to see him go. Esan Masters just oh, what happened to Esan Masters? <laughs> He looked like an absolute world beater um, a couple of years at the Tigers, and uh, he just. Man, he he lost it. He fell off a cliff. Um, Greg Marju has gone to the Knights. I'm disappointed by this. I love Marju, but defensively, obviously, he's a bit of a liability. But man, I love Marju. I, I, I don't know. I, I, I'm uh, I'm happy he's still at the in the NRL. Um, I, I think it's an okay pickup for the Knights, but. Uh, I love Marju. I think he's great, even with his flaws. Kevin Proctor. Oh, thank fuck he's gone. Oh, my God. <laughs> oh, it's great to see the back of Kevin Proctor. Good God. Uh, Will Smith is gone. Corey Thompson retired. What a what a stalwart Corey Thompson was. Uh, and then Jared Wallace also gone. You know, never, never really... Um, had the impact he was looking for since moving from the Broncos. You know, he, he was one of those signings from the Bronx that... I, I thought he was going to turn into one of the be the better front rowers in the comp, but uh, yeah, just just didn't really kick on. But again, going back to the going back to Bennett, where he played his best footy, I think it's okay, um, and it's it's a good one to to let go. I think it's for the for the best. Um, but let's look at their exciting seventeen. So this is um, <clears throat> okay. So there there is some <laughs> there. There are some youngsters here, they reckon. And also, it's oh, I, I don't really know how to feel about it, what what they think, and also what is probably going to happen. So, Brimson at fullback. Now, I do... Oh, it's a tough one, because I do actually think Brimson is... Like, naturally, I think his best position is fullback. But Jaden Campbell... I know Campbell cops a fair bit of flack, but I'm a Campbell supporter, and I, I think Campbell should be the number one... And I think Brimson uh, with Kieran Foran in the halves would work a treat. But they've gone with Brimson, uh, Kieran Foran obviously the six, and Tanner Boyd in the seven. I just, I, I just, I just don't think Tanner Boyd is is a good enough NRL number seven to be 
uh, starting there. I just, I just don't see it. I would, I, uh, I would just much rather Kieran Foran playing seven, Brimson at six, and Jaden Campbell at the back. Um, you know, maybe I'll be proven wrong. Uh, Tanner Boyd. I mean, he's, you know, he he was sort of one of those guys coming through like lower grades and stuff. Who was a bit of a, you know. A, a prodigy type player, but I just I, I just don't see that he's got the next step in him to be a number seven. I think him as like a fourteen is perfect because he can play. You know, he can play some dummy half, play in the play in the halves if necessary. But I uh, I don't know I don't know. I'm interested to, to hear what you guys think about Tanner Boyd at seven. Um, you know, strong defensively. He is a good good ball runner, but I just worry about the kicking game because Kieran Foran, Kieran Foran is not a great kicker. I would say he's he's okay. Um, and Tanner Boyd, I don't think is that much better either. I I I don't like it. I don't like the six and seven, um, but I do think Brimson at one is like that's his best position. But I think for the team. I think him at six is better. But I could be wrong. I could be very wrong. Uh, they've got the two youngsters on the wing. Fafida, who was who had a standout, standout season last year. He was sensational, honestly. Um, he has the potential to turn into one of the best wingers in the game. Like the, the efforts he put in last year in a, in a pretty poor team, uh, outstanding. He was very, very good. And then uh, the number five, the flyer, Khan Pereira, who they tout is, I, I think they're saying he's the quickest at the club, which they, they've got some quick guys there. So that's that's pretty good raps. Um, they do have any others. So obviously Kelly suspended. I don't I don't remember what that... <laughs> I don't know what he did. I don't remember at all, honestly. Uh, Patrick Herbert. Uh, Herbert. <laughs> um, he's injured. Um, I, don't, I don't remember what happened to him. Um, they've got... Uh, I actually saw... Oh my God. Such good news. Tremaine Spry is back. Um, I'm not going to go too much into it, but he obviously suffered like a cowardly punch and uh, I think he had like a, a bleed on the brain and like all sorts of... All sorts of shit there. Um, but he he's back. He, he's back in... I think the Titans did officially like sign him into the top 30 and he was... Oh yeah, he's, got, he's right there. Tremaine Spry. Um, he... Man... A couple of years ago, when he got his crack, he looked very good. So I don't. I think it's probably a bit early for for Spry, but I would love to see him back. Um, it's just a great. It's great to see him um, get back into the into into the NRL. So they, they've got some. They got some back depth. It'll be interesting to see what they do with uh, Brian Kelly and and Herbert uh, as well, because Aaron Shop definitely. He definitely has to be one of the centers, and then Philip Sammy. Uh, I don't, I don't know. <laughs> All of these guys have their moments of brilliance. I think out of those three, Herbert misses out uh, altogether because I just think he he's too hit or miss. Like he had, he does have the odd game where he's really good, he's aggressive, but they're just too a bit too far in between. I think out of Kelly. And a couple of the other young guys, I mean, maybe they'll, they'll probably shift Philip Sammy to the wing and Cali back into the centers when he's back sus uh, from suspension. But, um, yeah, I mean, they've also got Paul Turner um, in the others. Like, they, they've got some depth there. So, uh, at, at the end of the day, it's going to be which one of these guys stands up and... and plays consistent footy because they can definitely chop and change but I think Jojo Aaron Shop, and probably Philip Sammy are all pretty safe I, I I think Sammy is is pretty pretty okay and we'll see Cam Pereira could absolutely kill it in the first couple of weeks I don't know how long Kelly's out suspended but um if he if he comes out to a flyer I mean maybe they don't maybe they don't chop and change and just keep it like that but we'll see uh the halves I talked about I still I just don't like it. <laughs> I don't I just don't particularly like. Um the front row I do like a lot. Big Tino, Mo Fodawaka, that is that I mean that's a, that's as good as you're gonna get in the front row. Um that's as good as any other team in the comp in my opinion. Um very, very strong. Uh Fodawaka with the footwork, Tino as well. There's probably the one the one area about these guys, they don't the offload game is a bit hit or miss. Um I think Mo definitely has it in him. Tino is a bit 
Um, he did start to get it a bit last year, so I think if they can start with a bit more second phase footy, because I mean, they're such monsters that. Like, they're hard to put down. Tino's in that Joe Tarpany mold. He just has to... I mean, honestly, just <laughs> just sit Tino down and say, watch Tarpany and just play basically like Tarpany. That's all he has to do. Um, but Tino was huge from last year. Mo, I, I did think Mo was a little bit down, but I, I think he's going to come back strong this year. And then the back row, I do like the back row as well. I like Dave Fafita, obviously. Uh, Bo Fermor had a had a breakout year he was very very solid uh he, <laughs> he did have a couple of games where he just <laughs> his hands let him down deluxe but you know he, he's a solid uh, solid player and then aaron clark oh my god they finally <laughs> they finally i mean the fact that they have like a proper number nine now aaron clark playing at lock tino in the in the prop uh it just works and aaron clark when he went to lock last year uh, was excellent. You know, that, that smaller 13 um, with good hands, good offloading, breaking tackles, just quick around the ruck, it works nicely. It works nicely. And I think Aaron Clark is going to come out and and do well. Now, the bench is interesting. Um, so, Jaden Campbell is the 14. I, I um, Jamin Jolliff, Isaac Liu. I thought Liu... I thought Liu uh, signed to to another club. Am I going crazy? <laughs> I, I thought he I thought he signed to to another team. Maybe not. I don't know. But he's he's on the he's on the bench at the moment. And then Joe Stimson. I, I think that is a that is a absolutely god awful bench. <laughs> that is absolutely um, awful. Um, I'm trying to think who else they can put. I mean, you know, they've got the young Isaac uh, Fasua Mala Ali. Uh, they've got the young... <laughs> they've got the young uh, Haas as well. So they've got some young stars as well. Um, is oh, is it Joe, Joe Fu, Vuna? Is he the outside back or is he the, the big forward? I can't remember. But um, they've got some young forwards coming through. So maybe they do go with like Jolliffe and Stimson. I just ah uh, I don't like that too much. I, I thought their I thought their bench would have been a bit stronger. I, and I would like to either Stimson or, or Jolliffe, I think, makes way for one of those young those young forwards and just give them give them time. Because I mean at the end of the day, Tino can play huge minutes, Mo Fodawaki can play huge minutes, and then the back the the back row for Fida Firm or Clark. Clark can play big minutes as well, so you don't need you don't need a Stimson and a Jolliffe there um, to just trundle around. Like put one of those young those young excitement machines on the bench for you know a twenty minute burst here and there. I I, I think their their starting pack can play can play big minutes. They don't need to have um, a couple of those guys there. So the the times I I do think they'll sneak into the eight. Um, although, I, I keep looking at Tanner Boyd at seven and I'm like, that's just not good. Like, I, I just think uh, a team with, with a halfback that I, I just don't think is NRL standard, they, I just don't think they can make the eight. So, unless that changes, um, well, I guess the thing is of that, if they're going well with Tanner Boyd, then I guess they will make the eight. And if they're not going well, then they probably will end up changing it and probably shifting Campbell back to fullback and, and whatnot. But uh, I guess we'll see. We'll find out. Um, it's probably my, my, my one big concern about their team. Um, you know, they got plenty of depth in the outside backs. Uh, like I said, Chris Randall is there as a backup nine. And even Aaron Clark in a pinch. Um, I'd like to see him stay at 13. But if... if you know, they, they, if they did need another backup, then they, they can also shift Clark back there. Um, I guess, they, you know, Sam McIntyre is also not a bad option for the bench. He does add a little bit of a little bit of skill off the bench, but, uh, but yeah, I, I do like I do like their their team quite a bit. So yeah, I I just uh, my only thing <laughs> my only thing is having Campbell at fullback, Brimson at six, and Four and a seven, and Tanner Boyd probably at fourteen, or maybe, eh, pro probably, probably, 
probably Boyd is, at 14 is is the way to go. But uh, you know, well, we could, we'll see. We'll see how it works. Um, Tenor Boyd could absolutely make me eat my words, but uh, we shall see. Hopefully, you guys are enjoying the uh, the 2023 discussions. Make sure to like and comment, and I'll see you in the next one.